That's a Motown favorite. Love that song. 65 was the year for that. Uh, the Supremes and Stop in the Name of Love. It is just about 11 minutes after 3 o'clock. A big hello to you. It is our Friday Afternoon Express. I'm Eva D. Thank you for spending time with us here today. Liz West is off. We know that there is uh, no shortage of great shows here in Toronto. But we all know that some are more memorable than others, shall we say. And I'm talking about one particular show uh, that uh, made its debut at Crow's Theatre. It's called Boom X. Now, this is a a very high-energy one-man show that um, documents the music, the culture, the politics that shaped baby boomers, you and I, yeah. And I must tell you, just from reading some of these reviews, some of them, they're incredible, the reviews on this show. To tell us more, we welcome the man behind the show in studio, Rick Miller. Thank you. Good to see you, sir. Eva, it's great to be here. Thank you. Oh, wow. What a pleasure. Now, I want to say straight up, okay? I have not had the pleasure of seeing your show, but many people have, including Moses Neimer. He, now, I, I, Rick, he sees a lot of shows. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't often come in here and tell me face to face. He raved about your show. Uh, and, and now he told me all about it, but I'm not great at relaying what he said to me. Sure. So I'd rather you tell our listeners about this fabulous show. I will. Yes. Okay. So so um, high praise from Moses, by the way. Mm-hmm. So uh, the show is actually part two of a trilogy of shows that I've created. Boom was the first one about the baby boom generation, music, culture, politics. This one is actually about Gen X. So it uh. follows my life growing up in Montreal, uh, 1970 to 1995. And I play a hundred characters, including myself and many people who influenced me, but all the big musicians, politicians, everyone who sort of shaped that story. And uh, I should just add a little funny note because yes. yesterday Moses yes. was in the audience mm-hmm. and I, I shout out to much music in the show because I'm mm-hmm. part of the MTV generation. Mm-hmm. And he, he corrected me and said, you know what? MTV didn't actually play in Canada. And next time you do the show in Toronto, you got to add more much. And so I promised him I would. And here we are. But it's, a, it's honestly a super fun show. We're, we have our 200th performance uh, that we've done all over the world. And now this that show is closing in Toronto on a 200th show on Sunday afternoon. So I'm really excited. Look at that. Yeah, okay. I want a little bit more detail. We're going to hear, uh, I want you to paint a picture here. We're going to hear the voices of like over 300, I'm reading here, uh, influential figures and musicians like... Yeah, well, I, God, from from in the music. So 100 okay. in this particular show because it's the middle show. Okay, but got it. Okay. Like all the singers from, you know, Freddie Mercury to, to punk and disco to wow. new wave to grunge, all the stuff that some baby boomers love and love to hate. It's really just this this very big picture portrait of a generation and it's very joyous, it's very celebratory. It's it's also very technically complex. Yeah. I play a lot of people very quickly with huge costume changes well, and it's a, it's a damn lot of fun. <laughs> funny you should say that because Moses made a point to mention. He says there's nothing slow about your show. He said something he, here's the words, blinding speed. <laughs> now, yeah. I, 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 let me ask, how do you prepare for this? What 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 goes uh, behind a a typical preparation for one of your shows? I've been doing solo shows like this for for my whole career, for 25 years. And, uh, you know, on the way here, I was talking about Mick Homer, The Simpsons Do Macbeth, which I did for 17 years. Crazy production of Shakespeare using Simpsons voices. Mm -hmm. I don't do that one anymore, but it trained me to do this kind of craziness fast-paced stuff, and it's fast-paced because I'm juggling a lot of balls in the air, literally. I'm, I've got music, culture, politics, wow. personal stories, and I just, I'm trying to keep the audience riveted with really fun multimedia as well because you grew up at that time, you grew up with yeah. music television and yeah. so many uh, video games, the start of the internet. So uh, how do I do it? I just, I'm very, very focused on what I do. I love what I do, and I work my ass off, not only before the show, but during the show to give people, I think, a really unique intergenerational experience. So so it's a good show to bring your kids if you feel they don't understand you very well. Wow. Uh, what was it like personally for you, uh, though, Rick, because you've been in the theater business a while, uh, to, to to be in the theater business post-pandemic? Did you did you find people were hesitant to come back out? Yeah, during the it's, it was a three-year, pretty much a hiatus yeah. where everything was put on hold, and it was tough for so many people, and theater artists among them. And I, you know, I'm an international theater artist, and I couldn't travel, and I couldn't do theater. Mm-hmm. So, however, everything is slowly coming back. Audiences, I think, are coming back almost, almost at full force. Yeah. Uh, some shows are masked if people are still concerned about about that. The, you know, our Sunday show is masked, 
But uh, I do find the audiences want something live, in person, yeah. personal, and they're looking for something that, you know, you get great stuff on, on Netflix and streaming services, undeniably. But what you get in the presence of other people is still magical. And it, I try to create moments where you go, how the hell did he do that? And nice. that's part of the yeah. energy of the show. Yeah, nicely put, though. You're right. Uh, being in the crowd with, among others, laughing together with other people is very special, Oh, isn't yeah. And this show, it's been and so great. We're in a kind of a smaller venue here compared to what we're used to. Yeah. But the energy yeah. of the audience, is it's just extraordinary. And I, it's electric. I love it. Okay. I want to cover a couple of things so so I can bring you mentioned kids yeah so even if you're not a boomer uh, oh yeah they're gonna it, like this right boomers live through this this is a show I did I mean it, the ideal kind of age range is if you're Gen X which means you're born between like 1964 and 1983 and usually it means you have teenage kids or yeah. you know in some cases this is the perfect show to either see with your parents who are like Ah, I get it. And your kids who are like, ah, oh, I get it. Ah, it so I get it's a real it. <laughs> intergenerational experience. It shows that, honestly, for young people who are so anxious about the world today, like, I, I get that too. Mm -hmm. But, you know, in 1983, with, you know, the day after and nuclear war, like, I thought the world was going to end then too. And people who lived through the baby boom, 1968 was a pretty tough year too. So this is yeah. sort of to show that we can listen and learn from the mistakes of our past and really kind of celebrate what we have, which is the ability to transcend all that and mm -hmm. get together and, and lift our spirits, you know? So when you do this show, Rick, is there a particular scene or segment or something that stands out that the audience is more receptive to? Does that make sense? Yeah, I pretty much ask the audience, okay, call stuff out. This is the show if you want to ah, clap, if you want to, you know, call okay. stuff out. Don't disturb the other people. Like, you know, don't keep singing after I've finished. But there's one <laughs> bit right in 1984. It's right before intermission. Okay. And I perform the, fr I'm 14 years old, and I perform the first number I ever performed in front of anyone, and it was 20 of the top 20 songs of 1984 in two minutes and two seconds. And if I had a guitar now, I'd, I'd do it, but, you know, I don't have one. But basically, I run through, like, Brian Adams, the cars, you know, wow. uh, yeah. Prince, Lionel Richie, and I do this fast-paced thing where I have the audience call out the names. And it's so cool to watch some people know everything <laughs> and some people know absolutely nothing. <laughs> well, you know you're not going to walk out of this studio right now without giving us a little snippet, oh, a little sampling, a little taste, okay, a little something, so you, something. You got it. Okay, I don't have my okay, guitar, so but I, you're going to have to imagine what, a guitar here, right? So, okay, okay. you're going to call out, as well as uh, Owen uh, over Owen, here, yeah. call mm -hmm. out the artist if you know it, okay? So pardon my voice. Oh, it doesn't no. have the guitar or the okay, reverb. Owen, but come on, turn on I got my first real six string. Okay. Uh, uh, it. Brian Adams, you got... You might think I'm crazy. All I want the cars. Oh, hold yeah. me now. Oh, oh my Thompson twins. Yes. Islands in the stream. That is Joey what we Barton are. And Kenny Rogers. That's right, very good. Okay. Oh, I like this. Okay. <laughs> There's a young man. In a t-shirt, listen to a rock and roll. John Cougar Mellencamp. Uh, Might as well jump. Go oh, ahead, wow. jump. Van Halen. Mr. Van Halen. Come on, feel the noise. Oh, Girls, um, quiet riot. Quiet riot. Hello, is it me you're looking for? Lionel Richie. Uh, I just uh, called. Anyway, I could go on and on and on. Wow. But I don't have a guitar and I feel a little bit naked here. Yes. So. <laughs> But Wonderful. actually, Owen, good job there for a non-Gen Xer. That was, that was pretty good. I knew. Good. I just didn't want to interrupt you. That's you all. Because I knew every answer. Him, of course. Right? Yeah, yeah, okay. I mean, g give the kid a break. Stay <laughs> humble. This is great. Uh, very, very excited about seeing this show. We don't have much time, though, left, do no, we? No, there's only four shows. We have a show tonight and tomorrow night, and then Saturday afternoon, Sunday afternoon, and then we close. So... It, and I, I was just, I've been all over the world with this thing. So this is Toronto. This is your chance to see a really cool show. It's your last weekend. Wow. Okay. And that really co cool show is happening at Crow's Theatre on Carlaw. Yeah. Uh, we can get tickets uh, in yep, advance. Yeah, you get tickets. Arts workers get t $25 tickets. If you're under 30, you get $20 tickets. You just ask the box office. And everyone else, you know... Hey, you're you're. Uh, there are probably other discounts too, but just come and fill the theater. It's really fun. I know why Moses raved about the show, Rick. Oh, he's a good man. Yeah, well, <laughs> and it's a good show, my friend. <laughs> Very excited about that. We've been chatting with Rick Miller. He's the one man genius behind Boom X, uh, playing for a limited time. Of course, tonight, tomorrow, the matinees, Crow's Theater on Carla. I'm telling you, you want to check out this show. It'll revitalize you, right? You're gonna <laughs> feel. You will feel something. Whether it you'll is, feel, you'll feel something. You'll something feel more alive at the end of this show, guaranteed. Now, I want you to go home after this interview and rest, okay? you got a big show coming up. i got another right? one coming up, but after that I will rest, I promise. What a pleasure to meet you. Thank nice you, sir. Nice to meet you, Eva. Thank you, Rick. Oh, oh. Yeah. Uh, Eva, I should say, what? there's a character in there called Eva, the Eva Destruction. No! Eva D, and she <laughs> was my first love. Stop I call her it. the Eva Destruction. Eva D. Eva D, I love it! I'm going. It's fate. 
Skyward's traffic time. We have some construction out there this afternoon. Westbound of the 401, the ramp to here, Ontario, blocking the two left-hand lanes there. As well, we have emergency road work on the eastbound.